right, Dr. Ben Galliard here, author of the book, Rebuild Your Brain, Stop the Damage, Start the Repair. I'm gonna go over four different things with you today. These are the top four things that you need to get checked in your blood work to get greater brain function. So the first one I wanna go over is ferritin. Ferritin is looking at the total iron available in your bloodstream. So what does that mean? Well, that means how much iron is gonna be able to get transported to the different parts of your body, specifically your brain. The brain needs two things to function optimally. It needs fuel and it needs activation. Activation is our body movement. So every time you make, make a move, you stand, you do anything, it's giving feedback back to the brain. We need that, it's crucial. The other is fuel. Fuel comes in, in two forms. One is oxygen and the other is glucose. So what is iron for? Iron is there to help move that oxygen around the body, specifically to the brain. The brain needs lots of oxygen. What happens if we get cut off from oxygen for even 30 seconds to a minute. We're gonna pass out, the brain's gonna start shutting down. Very crucial for us to function optimally. So one of the first things that we have to look at is somebody anemic, do they have low ferritin? Ferritin in that 40 range is gonna be really good. We see people down even into the low teens to the single digits, and we've gotta figure out why that, that ferritin is low, why they're lo losing iron, and then we can start raising it up, taking in external iron, things like that. So ferritin is a crucial marker that everyone needs to have done in their blood work. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not do it. Most medical doctors do not look at that if you're doing your routine panels. The next one that we look at is hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is typically tested in people that have diabetes. Well, odds are you don't have diabetes. Maybe you do, but a lot of people that we test with hemoglobin A1C do not have diabetes. So why are we checking that? Well, it's the average of the last three months of their blood sugar. So fasting glucose just gives you this one little 12 hour window. A1C gives you this entire three month. What's been going on with that blood sugar? Too high, too low? Sometimes we'll even see people that are in the good range and yet what's happening? Well, they're spiking up and down, up and down, up and down, so their average looks good, but we're seeing other indicators that is causing that blood sugar to go up and down. So what happens last time you, you had low blood sugar or somebody you know, they got hangry, right? So that blood sugar crashes, they get hungry, tired, uh, cranky, angry, all types of different things because why? The brain needs that consistent stream of glucose. Vitamin D is another crucial marker that we need to look at in blood work. And vitamin D is going to tell us exactly how much you have in your body. And that's the great part about this. You don't have to guess. You don't have to go, oh, I need 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000. Well, depending on where it is and that number is, we're going to be able to determine exactly how much vitamin D you need to be taking in. Some people, if they're down at 20 and they need to be at 60 to 80, and they're only taking a thousand or two thousand a day they might get up to 25 and that would be that would be the maximum there so we've got to figure out uh, what that vitamin d level is and and where those numbers are so the last part that we're looking at is cholesterol and a lot of people are thinking oh yeah cholesterol cholesterol high must be really bad right because we're going to have heart disease and we're going to have all these different issues going on well that's actually not what i'm looking at with cholesterol uh, first thing i look for is cholesterol too low which happens very often in people. If cholesterol is too low, it's crucial for transporting fats around the brain and really making that good transition of all those nutrients that we need. Cholesterol is also a big part of what the brain's made up of. So we have to have optimal cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is also a precursor to every hormone in the body, whether that's cortisol from the adrenals, uh, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, all these things. So if we have too low of cholesterol, whether that's our artificially from taking a statin or it's from just not absorbing as well as we should, not eating enough good fats, whatever it is, we're not going to be utilizing that brain function as well as we should. The thing that we see with high cholesterol, it's usually a blood sugar imbalance. We'll see that with the A1C and we know that we've got to get a better consistent blood sugar uh, level in that body as well. So next time you go see your doctor, you've got to get these four, four markers checked and it's going to significantly help your brain function if you start delving into why why these are out of balance and not just trying to change them with a medication or a supplement or anything, but figure out why that's not working. So uh, if you found this information helpful, definitely share with uh, family and friends and we'll talk to you soon.